With the release of DaVinci Resolve 17's beta, there was quite a few updates that were added to the user interface of Fusion. Uh, they're more or less like a quality of life, ease of use sort of thing. So yeah, makes things just a little bit easier. Uh, anyways, let's just jump right in. Before we get started, for those who haven't seen my content before, I do have a website that's fully dedicated to everything DaVinci Resolve. You can go there and take a look at a ton of different tutorials I have, as well as pre-made assets. Okay, so the first one, if we come over, uh, I'm, I'm starting off on the edit page because this is kind of where we have to start because uh, this is where this kind of thing would typically start. Uh, so let's say we have a couple of clips here and we need to tell uh, either ourselves at a later point in time or we need to tell a VFX artist the particular clips and what we have to change. So if you don't know, if you've never used markers before, there are two different ways that you can apply markers. You can apply markers to the timeline or you can apply markers to the clip specifically. Uh, and this works for video clips, images, or fusion comps, anything like that. In a situation like this, where I have multiple clips that are stacked on top of each other, we might just want to edit you know, one little aspect of a particular clip. And that's where we would end up putting it on the clip because something, the timeline structure might get changed or something of that nature. So we would wanna put it on the particular clip, the marker, because that particular clip needs to have something adjusted with it. So to do that, we would click on a clip and then come in and pick our color. And now that marker is on that clip. The other way of adding markers in is actually adding it onto the timeline. So if nothing's selected, I can come in and pick one. And now that's added onto the timeline. Having the distinction between these two is very beneficial. The other thing that we can do with clips or excuse me, markers is we can come in we can write some information on here. Uh, we can do that for all of them. And now whoever is going to be working on those can now read those, be able to do whatever adjustments that need to be done to those particular uh, parts of the clip. Do note that these things, if you do use uh, Frame.io, they have the similar thing. You can have the markers imported in. So understanding how this works is definitely beneficial for people that use that kind of a thing. So let's jump over into Fusion. And this is the one caveat about having the markers. So if I come into here and I look, okay, we're currently on the second clip uh, within the timeline. And if we look down here, we have one marker, right? We have one marker that is actually on the timeline as we can see there to be able to view these markers you can view it in one of two areas we can view it in the spline tool or we can view it in the keyframe editor and we can right click in here or you can hit shift g that's the default we can click on that and then we can see that marker there um, and what we have to do now i do want to make something clear here on the third clip here we do have a marker on the inside so let's go jump back over here and let's go over to the third clip that is right here and we look at that and right there that marker is now we have an idea of where the marker is but if we come up here the only thing we can do is add a marker because currently within the time period uh, we can't actually view any markers so what we could do is we could add a marker i guess this is the other thing to add in there and then now we can view show markers and we can only see that one marker because in the time period that this clip is showing uh, there's only this one this one marker that is on the timeline all of the markers that are on the clip do show up but from my knowledge at this point there is no way to view the information in those or make any adjustments now i'm going through this little marker thing we can come in and change the name to something else and we can also add in a note just like we were previously doing all right and then we can add more delete or close now that i added this one on here if i come back over to the edit page we can see that that is now there markers kind of pass through all pages at this point, which is a really good thing. Just note, currently, we are unable to actually view the information on markers that are assigned to clips. We can see them, but we can't read the information from them within the Fusion page. We can only apply whatever we want to based on the position that we've seen in the keyframe editor. The other thing that I wanna show is now we have all three of these within the time period of this one. So if I came back over into Fusion, we can see all three of those markers there. Uh, we can click on these markers, move them, right click, go into here to show, but it's only going to show the markers that are on the timeline and we can get the information. We can only view the location of this, hover over, we can see the information, but 
nine times out of 10, you're just going to be in here like this and you're going to be hitting, uh, what is it? Shift G. No, wait, do you have to have this open? Hold on. It's Shift G, right? Shift G. Interesting. So this has to be open to be able to see that. And the only way to open it, I thought you would be able to see it uh, with it closed. But anyways, so that's that. I don't know if that I feel like I would want to be able to just hit shift G instead of having to open this come down here, have this as an active window to then do that little weird. But that is the first one uh, markers. <laughs> so the next one is going to be what is referred to as bookmarks and bookmarks are going to primarily be used for if you have really big complex node structures and you want to be able to jump around to different locations and i'll quickly show you that by just loading in a bunch of different uh, tools that i have already pre-made here so now we have these things that are called underlayments and they uh kind of show off the different areas and you know you can highlight them the easiest way to make these is just shift spacebar and then just type under and then you go and you can kind of move these around once you have a bunch of nodes uh on inside of them so if we go like this and the nodes are inside of them then when we click on this it's going to highlight all those nodes you can then move it around uh, it's just an easy way to change the names of these uh, you can click on it hit f2 and then you'll be able to change a name since it highlighted all of them now it's going to make ask me if i want to change the name of all of them that are inside of that but that's how you would then do that so now i have a couple of them scattered in my project so think of you have a big node structure and you put these in so that you can remember the different areas. You do have your little notes that you can have, but then you can also have these to kind of space out different things. So to be able to jump around to the different ones, you come over here to your three little dots, and here we go. We can see all the different ones that we had. The one that we made, which is right here, I can click on it and it jumps right over, or I can go to one of the other areas and it jumps over to those areas uh, within our uh, node structure. And once you start to make complex node structure, this is definitely beneficial for projects that you're going to be working on for a long period of time, multiple hours, weeks, whatever it may be. So you can jump back in, jump over to a different area that's working on a different portion of the clip or excuse me, of the frame. And uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a really cool thing to be able to jump around between those. You can also come into here and you can add your own if you want to, or you can go to different areas uh, within. The next one is going to be able to customize your uh, toolbar. And I know some people, if you're a big user, uh, you probably don't use this toolbar that much. You typically just use the uh, select tool where you can just type it in and get it quick. Uh, but for maybe tools that you don't use that much or custom tools that you make, you can throw them in a little bar like this. As you can see, I have one that's called motion graphics. I click on that and it's a completely different bar. These are actually all the new shape tools that were just recently added in. One caveat to this is I kind of wish that we would be able to change the icons because as you can see, all these new tools don't have icons yet and they just unless you hover over them you don't know what they actually are so being able to put a word in there a letter uh, something that would be able to make them a little um, unique and you can kind of pull in any tool that you have uh, over here you can pull any of these uh, over and then get them down into here and to do that we just right click uh, right in here and we can go to custom and then we can create one or you know uh, rename or edit or remove uh, one that we already have the difference between here is these dividers well, there's one little thing that you got to know if i click way out here because like maybe i just want to add a divider it won't add a divider right you have to come right next to the tool and then go add divider for it to add a divider so you have your dividers once you add the divider this then becomes a group um, that's something to keep in mind because you can also come into here and you can go remove group if you're trying to break them down and open them up that's uh, a way in which that you would do that but you would all you then do is just grab it and drop it in there and then it's right there for you to to use at any point in time um, and you can do that with all of the stuff that you have and then if you want to use it you just click it and it brings it in and then there you go then you have all of your stuff so that's the next one is being able to customize your own little toolbar and you can make multiples of them like i have the default one and then the motion graphics one there so the next one is probably one of the biggest things 
uh, for users of Fusion uh, is being able to have your user interface switched around. Now you can't completely customize everything, but there are a couple of pre-mades for you. And so let me just jump through here and show you. If you come up here to workspace, and then we go down to layout presets, we come down here to fusion presets, and then we have a couple of presets in here. So we can open this up and it changes how things are laid out. As you can see here, we can come in and let's go in and grab the other one like that. This is something that I could see myself using. I'll bring this over and then we would have the spline across the bottom there. That, that That's kind of weird. But uh, yeah, so we would have our nodes up here, our spline down here if you're adding a lot of keyframes and like motion graphics. Over here you have your preview. Uh, let's go one. Over here you have your preview and then you can jump between your nodes and over here you have the ability to work and change things. I think like this kind of a layout. Is so that's pretty much the, the new user interface. I don't know if at some point in time we'll be able to go into the standalone fusion, maybe make our own layouts and then come over here to layouts and maybe import a preset. I don't know um, how that really works, uh, but currently these are the only ones from my understanding that you can do. Um, hopefully in the future we can customize this a little bit more, but seeing that this has happened, uh, definitely makes me think like we're going to be seeing a lot more of being able to customize the interface, which is amazing. That Those are the updates that I wanted to show you guys on the Fusion interface that I am pretty excited about. Uh, I don't really know if this is going to make things faster for people that are just new, but at least for the users that are uh, doing a lot of stuff in here, I think that a, a couple of these things are definitely a quality of life improvement. Um, so that's kind of it that I have for you guys today. And with that being said, stay safe, guys. My name's JR. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.